the topic of this session is the authenticity of value preposition and shared value creation in gastronomy tourism, collaboration as a source of innovation. So in this upcoming session, we will get to talk about cultural diversity as an element of value for tourists when choosing a destination and also talk about how authenticity has become the new luxury that tourists are looking for when they book a trip. And here to moderate this session, I would like to invite up on stage Mr. Xu Jing. Mr. Xu Jing began his career in tourism at the China National Tourism Administration, where he was in charge of the International Relations Divisions. He joined the World Tourism Organization, or the UNWTO, in 1992 as officer to the Regional Representation for Asia and the Pacific. And now he is currently UNWTO's Regional Director for Asia and the Pacific, a position he has occupied since 2003. Mr. Xu Jing. And I also would like to invite our speakers up on stage, beginning with Ms. Sangeeta Singh, Head of National Association of Street Vendors of India, NASV, India. Sankita Singh advocates the cause of street vendors and along with the rights of women and children. She heads the street food program of the National Association of Street Vendors of India, or NASVI. She consolidated the street food festival initiated by NASVI and curates it yearly as a mega event. Sankita Singh. Joining us next on stage, Mr. Sarod Ponprapa, President of Dusit Thani College and the Director of Operation Thailand of Dusit Education. Sarod Ponprapa has a PhD in hospitality industry and is an expert in the subject of organizational behavior, leadership, business ethics, and business negotiation. He is recognized widely for his teaching career and his research both at a national and international level. Sarod Ponprapa. And last but not least, joining us on the panel, Mr. Sriram Vaidya, Head of Airbnb Experiences for Southeast Asia and India. Mr. Sriram Vaidya runs the Airbnb trips business for Southeast Asia and India based in Singapore. He is tasked with building thriving communities of experienced hosts and entrepreneurs and growing Airbnb's presence as a hospitality leader across the region. Mr. Sriram. All right, we have our panelists and our moderator on stage. I would like to pass this microphone to Mr. Xu Jing, our moderator, all yours. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much, because this will actually bring us to a much bigger picture. When you feel that growth is necessary, but growth has to be inclusive. And this is exactly what we try to advocate and that is the attainment of one of the sustainable development goals. And that is the growth. You can be rapid, but you have to be inclusive. Thank you so much. Our next speaker, Dr. Sarob Pongprapa. He is the president of uh, Dusitani College. Dr. Sarah, I didn't know that you are also the director of Operations Thailand Education Component. Uh, Thank you so much. I think I better leave the floor first to you before I strike a joke here and there with you after your presentation. <laughs> Let's welcome. Thank you very much. Um, it's been an honor for me uh, to talk about gastronomy in my country. However, uh, these three days would be the gastronomy experience for all of you who join Thailand. And on behalf of Thai people, may I say it once again, welcome to Thailand. <laughs> Many of you may be familiar with the name Dusitani Hotel. Um, Dusitani Hotel has been here 60 years already, but not many people know of Dusitani College. It's been founded 25 years ago by the owner of the Sitani Group. She foresee that in the future, quality education would be a must, and especially for hospitality industry. So what we're trying to do is not to be an only uh, educational institution. At the very bottom right, you can see the words beyond education which means we go and we work with every single stakeholders 
in the society and in the country and in the world to make sure that hospitality, the hospitality industry would be there uh, to stay. Next slide. The simple question is, first and foremost, before this question, do you think fish drink water? Who said yes? Thank you. Who said no? Who said, I will Google it first? <laughs> right. So thank you very much. The answer is yes, fish drink water, but very limited amount it, through the osmosis uh, 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 system. Because if it drinks, it lives in water. If it drinks the way we drink water, it, dilute, it would dilute all the mineral system in, our body, in its body. Now, the reason for this question was now we're used to finding the answer on our own. And you want to talk about gastronomy in Thailand, you go to TripAdvisor, you go to anything. I was in a conference in Munich, and everyone must go to Hof Braunhaus, right? For that beer and you know, all the good food there. But then again, when I go to the rating agency, they tell me about other story, not only Hof Braunhaus, but somewhere else that I should go. And this technology help us in terms of refocus. Where do we want to go? But one thing remained, though. How can we keep track? How can we keep this quality in place? Everyone can be a blocker. Anyone can be the rater. I was working with Thai Airways International, and I said there will be two groups of people coming to use your service. The first one coming to use your service as usual, as a tourist, as a traveler. But the other group would go on your plane and rate your service. So instead of when you've done something good, instead of giving you a plus, they just leave it there. But if you've done something wrong, there will be a minus on that. So quality will be compromised in this kind of rating. So how can you work with this social media? How can you work with expectation by remain, by keeping the authenticity level high? So, the question is, how do you live your life? There are two things in life you have to plan earlier, in the long term, education and health. Education means that you have to have quite a goal, Why would, what kind of degree you'd like to pursue, and then you go ahead with that. But then again, health, if you eat something, and you eat fast food, you eat something that's not good for your body, you pay for it at the very end. Value proposition is about keeping promises. So I think Thailand has done a good job in terms of keeping promises for those who come to visit Thailand. I have a friend of mine coming to Thailand, Dimitris Buhalis, some of you may know him. Every time he, he comes to Thailand, I have to take him to very good restaurants, and he eats a lot. And when he goes back to England, he, was, he is a professor there, he said, Sarote, I miss Thai food. I miss Thai food a lot. And I said, is there anything else that you miss in terms of, you know, uh, 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 gastronomy aspect, for instance? So we discussed about this. We said, first, we miss, oh, Thailand has done a good job in terms of gracious hospitality. Thailand has been known as the land of smile. And last year, I hosted a conference called Gracious Hospitality Conference, a small college in this side of the world, trying to invite a big name, big shot to come in. But one thing that we get from this conference, Professor Jafar Jafari made it very clear to me. He said that before he came to my conference, he thought that hospitality is the soul of tourism. But after my conference, he said, you know, Sorote, graciousness is in fact the soul of hospitality. So Thailand remained authentic in this aspect from the old, the old days until now. The second thing that very impressive is Thai food. Many people, when you go back to your country, you want to cook Thai food. But it's very difficult to cook, right? Very complicated. You can't find the ingredient. Even though you cook it, it's very like 10% that you experience in Thailand. So it makes you want to come back here again. And that's the impact of Thai gastronomy. Last but not least is the attraction. 
Yesterday, I met some professor, a good friend from Korea. He said, Sorote, you have such a beautiful country. And I said, thank you. I'm Thai. I don't see that. <laughs> I, I couldn't see a wood from a tree until someone tell me, right? And somebody would like to come back and make a holiday here. But when you talk about gastronomy here, food is the center of the impression, right? But what really matters are the story of the whole dining phenomenon. What makes the food much more tasty is whom are you having it with or the story accompanying it. We all want to enjoy authentic experience, whether it's classic, artisan, fusion, chef table, or even molecular. These are all authenticity. You cannot say that fusion is not authentic. It comes from creativity. So we want to expect we want our expectation before you take, out, take off from your country and you want to participate in this. The difficult thing is your client becomes your work colleague now. And how can my student, who's going to be the owner of the business, keep high level of satisfaction of their uh, customer? As in the um, in, uh, educational institution, we work with all the stakeholders. We work with the government in terms of the rule and regulations. We work in, with the business uh, units for their growth, as you mentioned, product development. We work with NGO and uh, especially social enterprise to make sure that everything is sustainable. Now, when I talk, I said I talk with, uh, work with the stakeholders. This is one of the examples. This is the Italian travel agency Mega Fam Trip experience sharing day on the 22nd of October last year. The Zitani College hosts it. I work with Tourism Authority of Thailand in Rome office, and uh, the director said, Sarote, how can we impress these uh, travel agents? I said, let's bring it, them to my college and let them cook and let them eat their food. So this is something like eye-opening, how authenticity could be created using you know, this uh, co-creation of values. TAT, their duty is to want to make sure that people come to Thailand and have a good time. I, as a host, make sure that Thailand has quality things to offer. The other thing is co-creation of the experience to partnership. We partner with many Groups, as I mentioned, a partnership is based on mutual trust, openness, share risk, and share rewards. So how do you define and prioritize your values? The picture in the middle is when the Sitani College has the privilege to work with the Royal Initiative Sea Farm in the province of Petbury. It's been initiated by Her Majesty the Queen's Regate of King Rama IX. She foresee that the livestock in the sea would be extinct very soon if we still do this kind of fishery things. So she said that fish farm would be the answer. Now, after the fish farm, you have all the products, right? And how can you make sure that you add value creation to those products? So we go in and help them with the study to develop the milk fish noodle mixed with green caviar seaweed and it becomes very delicious and would be in the store, uh, you know, in the main store in Thailand, all over, the world, uh, all, over, all over Thailand very soon. And we have a plan to export it once we have the authorization for that. Or with Thai Airways International, I was uh, serving as one of the member, uh, the board member of Thai Airways International in the uh, customer service. As I mentioned that, you know, you have to cope with uh, your clients when they come in. So we initiate this, uh, the program called Graciousness in the Sky. Thai Airways is the first national carrier and first ally in the world to add the aspect of Thai gastronomy and gastronomy into its service, first class service. It's not easy, but it can be done. What we're trying to do is to add the food styling skill, is to add the uh, storytelling skills to make sure that the flight attendants can go beyond their ability, make sure that 
they are well represented in terms of the good ambassadorship. Because when I talked to them, I said, you know, Thai Airways International is like the ambassador to the country. When you go there, you know, uh, TAT makes sure that, or the Ministry of Tourism makes sure that these people come to uh, Thailand, but Thai Airways is the first gate that they would experience. So make sure that the experience would be there uh, and very impressive. Einstein said, if you cannot explain simply, you don't understand it well enough. So my question is, what is your value proposition in terms of the service provider, the product developer, or even the traveler yourself? What kind of thing that you have? Why should you visit Thailand? Why should you visit the country? What value would you bring? What kind of co-creation that you can bring to my country, to Thailand? In the years before, I said maybe Thailand would need a lot of help from, my international, from our international alliances. But I am certain that one day, Thailand can stand on, it, on her own feet and become very strong and very well known. And that the dream has been proven by this conference, that at least you know, one aspect of Thai tourism, which is the Thai gastronomy, is now being recognized. I'm not trying to give you a lecture, but I'm a teacher. So, you know, I just want to make sure that when you, you co-create a value proposition, what kind of market are you looking for? Value experience for customer experience? What kind of thing that you offer? What kind of benefits that the market will derive from the product or service of yours? Alternative and differentiation, and of course, what kind of proof? I'm not going to tell you about story about Thai gastronomy because you're going to experience one more day here in Thailand. But I would strongly recommend that you stay here behind for a month and you can go to the northern part of Thailand, go to the eastern part, go to the southern part. They have a lot of tracks of gastronomy. I talked to a friend of mine, perhaps in the future we can do something about religious gastronomy, something that we can do. But now, come back to the question here that as a college, as an educational institution, we make sure that the standards stay, the old knowledge stay, you know, and we create, we co-create it with the technology. We control the quality, but we not control the creativity. Technology is here to stay, I understand that. But it's very easy to dehumanize a customer to use the check-in counter at the airlines. It's like using the automatic machine. You don't have to experience any emotional turbulence there. But what is the charm of the real gastronomy is that you come here and you experience the culture. And where it's rich in culture is very emotional. And if you enjoy the emotional ride, something would be there for you to explore. So, is the culture and tradition being preserved and being passed on? Are you environmental and sustainability friendly? What kind of food technology that you would employ to enhance the experience of food gastronomy? Are you consider them to have good health and wellness after you, they leave your shop or restaurant? Because I order, well, not really, I told my instructor in my college saying that you cook something that make me eat less medicine. I don't want to eat anything that I like, and at the very end, the doctor prescribed me all the drugs and medicines. So Thailand also offered this, because Thai food is full of you know, horrible things and good for your life. That's why I recommend you to stay behind for a month. And the last but not least, you have to have the people with the right mindset. Thailand, for some reason, very lucky to have good people with the right mindset for service industry. We just want to make sure that the smile that you see is really genuine, and it's really genuine. You can see that when Thai people smile. They smile a lot here. And for those of you who are not familiar with this smiling, it could become very peculiar. Why are you smiling in a time like this? You know how many ways to say you and I in Thai? 
There are 19 levels to say you and I in Thai. But then again, this is all part of the culture that you can enjoy. And the food culture is one of the big part, especially the Thai gastronomy. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarok. Thank you, thank you so much. I think you have presented a very uh, comprehensive perspective, a perspective that uh, really links how a tourist can enrich his or her experiences by looking for the values. And I remember one of the slides you mentioned the word why. It's not just eating the food for the sake of eating it. You have to look, go beyond the food. You have to go for the values that you can uh, find. And, but that value probably doesn't come that automatic. The value needs to be, sometimes people think that if you have nice food, we just go there and take it. But being the educator and being a college president, I don't think that is what they do. What they do is to try to create the values behind the basic food. It is sometimes even to, as you put it, co-create the experiences and the, the values behind. Just for the audience, for your information, I happen to be his classmate back in many, many years in the UK. And he ended up as a PhD, and I ended up only as a best student of a master degree. But today is my chance of taking revenge, and I want to ask <laughs> you a question rather than you asking me being a professor. You mentioned, uh, Consarot, that you have all these initiatives that after your theoretical analysis of the six stages that you come up with certain stakeholders like the Thai Airways or some other uh, partners. Did you have difficulties in initiating these kind of initiatives? Because why should they collaborate with you? And what is the, actually the key in order to make this type of partnership a win-win situation? Because uh, everyone is here to be tested, and I, I believe that to remain sustainable, you, could, you have to have good partnership. And perhaps if you choose the right partner, it's just like marriage, right? If you have the good partner, you make it sustainable. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, don't see, I, I don't see this as a revenge, but I would put it simply just like when I talked to you 20 years ago that, you know, um, we have good friends to help us to go very long, long way. And I, I don't think this business partner is only, you know, based on uh, mutual trust alone, but it's uh, it based on the long-term relationships. Mm -hmm. And of course, I believe in win-win-win situation, which means I win, you win, and the society win. One thing that I didn't have a chance to mention that is, I believe in long-term uh, consequence rather than short-term because uh, I teach ethics in my business school for 20 years. I have one of my students who managed to buy uh, AC Milan football team, mm -hmm. and the other one is now serving his term in the prison because of the short-term gain rather than long-term sustainability. Thank you very much. Revenge taken. <laughs> but I'll leave all the rest of this the questions to be asked by your Thai students who are sitting over there later on during the session. Now let's welcome the last speaker in our session, uh, Mr. Shiran Vaidya, am I correct uh, the pronunciation, who is the head 